It is great to be back at Goalkeepers. It's wonderful to see so much energy in this room. And I have to say, though, quite a lot has changed since we were last together in this gathering. One thing has remained stubbornly the same, and that is that institutions, large and small, governments, businesses, even families, the face of power almost always belongs to a man. We are now eight years away from fulfilling the global goals by 2030, but the most optimistic data that I've seen about this gender goal is that we're still actually 86 years away as a world from fulfilling it. That is three generations. Think about it. It's our daughters, it's our granddaughters, it is our great granddaughters who are still going to be trying to keep up and catch up to their male peers. I don't know about you, but to me, that's a pretty depressing thought. And it keeps leaving me with this burning question of why, you know, why after decades of all these high profile events and efforts to improve the lives of women and girls, why does equality still remain so out of reach? And it's easy to say, oh, let's blame this on the pandemic, on COVID-19, because COVID-19 has absolutely damaged women's livelihoods and many girls' futures. But frankly, that's a cop-out, because the virus doesn't care about gender. Inequality, not biology, is the reason this pandemic has had so many gendered effects. Which brings us back to the question of why. Now, for me, there are two parts to the answer of this question. The first is that the world has always put gender equality on the back burner, leaving it back there to simmer while we focus on other important crises like climate change or the conflict in the Ukraine. But the second is that when the world does decide to do something about gender gaps, it treats the symptoms quite often, not the root causes. Take economic inequality as an example. In 2020, the World Bank reported that the global difference in expected lifetime earnings between women and men amounted to $172 trillion. That's the gap between men and women's lifetime earnings. That is twice the size of the entire world's GDP. So it's a safe bet that that gap has only grown since 2020, given the pandemic. Now, for years, our efforts have focused on closing this gap, including at our foundation. But I have to say, as we reflected on this, we've tended to center around women's economic empowerment. Now, that's development shorthand for providing women things like access to jobs or to cash. And those things certainly, don't get me wrong, they have a positive effect. But what happens when you give woman, a woman cash but you ignore the fact that her husband decides whether she spends it or whether she saves it? What happens when you help a woman get a job, but you ignore the fact that her entire family and society as a whole still expect her to care for the children? What can we do about this? It always leads me back to the question of why. Why haven't we spent more time making sure that women are actually gaining power in their families and in their neighborhoods. Because real power isn't just cash, it's also access to a bank account and a smartphone so the woman can make deposits and she can unlock economic opportunities for herself. Real power isn't just having a job, it's also affordable quality caregiving that ensures women aren't set up to fail in their jobs. And it does mean men taking their fair share of the responsibilities at home. Real power 
isn't just access to a doctor or a midwife. We've been focusing on that as a world. But it's really power is about the ability to make fundamental choices about your own body and your own health. So for the rest of this hour, we are going to explore that idea of power. What will it actually take to unlock power for more women? And how can we go about changing the face of power in our institutions, in our communities, and yes, in our families? These are the types of questions we should be asking every day until the only question left is, why didn't we do this sooner? That is when we will finally have a world that is gender equal. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Janet. Enjoy the hour.